Uh, all right, we're going. It's right, me great. and you. All right. How you been? Good. So thank you. You helped me make this into reality. So it's actually yeah. happening. That's great. Um, yeah, that's awesome. So who am I? You are Chris. I'm going to put that in later. Oh, okay. But this just wants, I just want to make this feel natural. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to put that in like pre edit so, so you're not like talking to the audience. You're just talking to me. I'm just talking to you. That's okay. what a podcast is. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I came to you for advice. Um, and you definitely gave it to me. You pointed me in the right direction. I started the podcast. Um, it's going pretty good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I came in here, uh, came to you for different intentions, though, for more motivation and for healing, but uh, it kind of went this way. Well, that uh, works. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, the subconscious is a big, big part of our brain. Okay. Probably the biggest part of our brain. And in there, our true desires lurk. Our true desires. And sometimes we don't see them because we get tied up in our conscious mind and our thoughts and our daily activities. But deep down, I believe we all have a burning desire for something, to do something. Yeah. Kind of like a mission or a purpose or a reason to live. Nice. In fact, I've, I've seen that people without a reason to live tend to not live very long. That makes sense. That makes sense. And I've had clients who were facing death, but then found a reason to live, and then rejuvenate. Nice. Nice. So, yeah, I'm super motivated. Um, you told me what I want in life. I'm like, I want to travel, mm -hmm. and I want to help people. Um, and you're like, so what are you going to do? I'm like, I'm going to start a podcast. Boom, it just popped into my head. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Um, how long have you been working with people, helping them, helping them heal? Uh, as a... As a life coach, um, well, my, my real title is BEST practitioner. BEST stands for Bioenergetic Synchronization Technique. What does that mean necessarily? Um, it basically means that we balance your body's energy. Okay. We work with your bioenergetic. We're working with the energy that your body produces so that there's no blocks, there's no you know, short circuits. And so that you can be your best self. Is that more physical or mental or both? Well, it's controlled by the brain. Okay. So the brain is like the center of the physical body. Like the hard drive or more like the software? No, it's more like the computer tower. The tower. <laughs> like the brain. Okay. okay. You know? Okay. It's, like the, it's like the motherboard okay. of your body because the cells are each like... A person okay each cell is an individual and there has to be some sort of central processing unit central communication you know it's, it's, it's the capital building of the state you know it's mm -hmm. there's 50 trillion cells and then the brain controls it all okay tells you you know because cells are born and die every day you know there's like a million cells that have been made in your body since we got together here interesting yeah yeah your average cell is only about two years old okay do you think uh, they die less when you're happier and healthier and you have a purpose? Well, of course. I mean, they, they last longer. They last longer. Yeah. They last longer and they're, uh, they don't create bad cells like cancer. Right. Okay. Yeah, and the, the reason ca cancer is a mutation. It's, yeah, definitely. You know, it's, we're, it's just a lack of communication to the mothership. And so it just goes off and does what it's supposed to do. It's kind of like... You know, you need nutrition to build a body, but you also need a blueprint. And if a truckload of nutrition was dumped in your backyard and you didn't have anyone to tell you where to put it, mm -hmm. it would just make stuff. Right. Like tumors and mutated cells come from a lack of communication. Okay. Okay. So is that why you think uh, people that are happier and more joyful in life tend to live a lot longer? Well, of course. You know, statistics show that some of them live up to 30 years longer. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's super interesting. Okay. How do you feel about people just being sad and they just need to uh, just get out of that rut? Do you think they could just snap out of it? They really can't. Um, they, they, they need help. Well, I think life is a team sport. Okay. I mean, they should definitely come to you. I highly, <laughs> no, I highly do. I mean, I didn't come to you for like they a fresh should come to somebody. Yeah, I came to you because of 
for motivation because I've been in sales, you know, and you definitely helped me out. I mean, you kind of took me to a different angle, but uh, which this came out of, but hey, this, that's awesome. Well, every Olympic athlete has a coach. That's true. Because you can't see it out of your own eyeballs. You mm -hmm. can't, you can't observe yourself. So you can't see what you're doing right or wrong. Make someone who's standing back 10 feet watching who knows what should happen to help you. So, you know, life's a team sport. And so if you think you're going to go it alone, you can try. You can try. But uh, you'll usually fall on your face. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you need a lot of uh, mindfulness. Right. I mean, but it's always helpful that you're right. There's an IMT. Right. The mindfulness, that's interesting. Um, you, you have a, a higher self up there somewhere. And you're just using that as your coach. Yeah, that's yeah, true. How about that? Yeah, yeah, you can use that as that. Yeah, just being aware of yourself. You're you're connecting to yourself. Okay. You know, to that place where there's no time and there's no space, and you already are everything you're ever going to be, and uh, you can tune into that sometimes through just through mindfulness meditation. You told me about that before. So nowadays, people drink a lot of coffee. They do energy drinks yeah. and things like that. How do you give people advice? on how to just get more energy out of life or their day without having to take all those uh, stimulants. Well, you know, it's okay to use a crutch when you have a broken leg. Yeah, but it's not going to fix your life. But it's not going to fix anything. Right, right. Um, you need to put a cast. And too to much might be making it worse, not better. Mm -hmm. You know, but a little bit might be helpful if that's what you need. But what, if you do the mindfulness, what you're going to bump into is major patterns that have been carried on for generations. You know, great-grandma had this problem, grandma had this problem, grandpa had this problem, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and these patterns might be patterns of depression, it might be patterns of feeling like you're not good enough, it might be sad or, or quick to anger and this kind of things. And, you know, those things aren't really our fault. They're patterns. But they may not be our fault, but they are a problem. They're there. They're, <laughs> They're there, there, and we do need to deal with them. Yeah, I mean, you, I know you definitely help people deal with them. How do you help them exactly? Okay, um, basically, we just reprogram them out of the brain. For instance, um, there's there's a conscious brain, and there's a subconscious brain, and I like to call it the, the conscious mind and the subconscious brain to differentiate them because a brain just runs programs. It's a computer. Mm -hmm. Type it's like it's actually an analog computer. It takes in um, information, it stores patterns, and then it spits it back out. And that's why you know we learn these neural pathways. That's why we learn to drive or do any kind of sports or read or write or anything. We're running thousands and thousands of programs automatically, and our brain likes to facilitate it, doing it even faster. For instance. Um, if you get angry a lot, the mm -hmm. brain's going to say, oh, well, that's our preference is to be angry. So let's help you get angry faster. Okay. <laughs> um. And there's a whole biology behind it with each cell has receptor sites and the brain produces certain hormones. And the more angry you are, the more those hormones go to those receptor sites and you actually develop an addiction to being angry. That's what I was going for. So a hormonal be, addiction yeah. to being angry. And the same thing works with happy or okay. peaceful or joyful so the thing that you do the most your brain's going to save your preferences and go there by default that makes sense homostasis yeah yeah so so you think people really enjoy being angry oh, unconsciously no. i don't think anybody enjoys being angry but I mean, they enjoy the, the feeling, hormone yeah, yeah the rush that the rush of dopamine coming into their systems every time they okay. get angry um can be very addictive just like dopamine happens when people run uh, I've had clients here, runners, who ran until their legs fell off. You know, I mean, because they wore their knees out, yeah. they wore their hips out because they just were so addicted to running because they're getting dopamine rush the whole time they're yeah. running. Yeah, runners high. Yeah, yeah, that may, definitely makes sense. You know, and they come, they would come in and say, "Oh, my knee hurts so bad, but I didn't need to be running. Can you please fix me?" But it's not the knee that's the issue. No, it's not. It's, the knee. it's in their head. Yeah. You need to fix that. Yeah. The underlying problem. Hey, you, same thing. you need to be good enough. You know, it's, people might overclean their house. 100%. They might uh, have any kind of um, hyperactivity that is just simply an addiction. 
to a pattern mm -hmm. that their body's been running. And like I said, they inherited the pattern. It's not even their fault. Yeah. It's, just, guy, yeah. it's just their problem. It's just their problem. And then you just need to help them de decode it, deprogram yeah. it. Yeah. And so let's go into that a little bit again. So we have, we have a, let's say if our conscious mind's the size of an apple. Okay. Our subconscious brain is about the size of this room. Yeah, tip of the okay. iceberg. Yeah. And when there's a, a tug of war, the subconscious will always win. You know, and that's why people say, I just swore I was not going to do that anymore. And then I end up, and doing, then I'm it. End up doing it. Why? Yeah. Because in the tug of war, the patterns win. And unless you just use super duper resolve, which, you know, most people don't, um, it's going to just snake back in or it'll find another way around. But sooner or later, the pattern takes over again. Okay. Now, that's why people stay on a weight loss program usually for like maybe two or three weeks and then it kind of fades right. away. There's something underlying. Or an exercise program or anything different. The patterns are saying, well, no. But understand that the patterns are there to keep us safe, mm -hmm. to keep us alive. And they've been developed over thousands of years. Uh, and that's why we're afraid of snakes and different automatically is because you know thousands of years ago somebody you know got hit hit and or you know bitten and killed by a snake and so now that pattern is built into our our subconscious so even and we've inherited thousands and thousands of these patterns during their genes like survival yeah. genes in a sense and so if we want to change a pattern okay there's a firewall there's a natural resistance that says nope we're safe and that's our number one job, is to be safe. The safe is boring. Well, that's the brain's number one job. Um, it's, it doesn't think, okay? It doesn't think fun, happy, excited. No, 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 no. It safe. is just a program. It's just a brain. It's just okay. a computer running programs. And its job is to keep you safe. Okay. And that's why your comfort zone will tend to shrink smaller and smaller smaller. If you let it, if you're not pushing against it, it shrinks to while you're sitting in your room and you're afraid to even go out of your room. You can get so afraid... Well, won't that develop diseases too? Well, like see, fear. it's not smart. It doesn't <laughs> think. Not smart. Uh -huh. It's simply just running programs to keep you safe. And if it away. thought, it wouldn't put you to sleep while you're driving down the freeway. Yeah. I mean, it would say, oh, that might kill us. Well, it's not ever been killed by a car wreck, so it doesn't see that as a threat. Okay. It only knows what it knows. And it knows that if you don't get sleep when you're tired, you will eventually die. So we're going to just. Take over and put you to sleep. Like primitive virgins. And you're like, okay. you know, logically, that's really stupid. That's not going to keep me safe. That's going to kill me. You know, so then we take caffeine. What to force it to stay awake while we drive home safely. You know, it's, okay. it's just, like I said, it's a crutch. Is there like a mental trick you could do? Yes, there is. And so there's this firewall. Okay. There's three ways past the firewall. Three. Three. Um, and the initials are... R, uh, R-I-D, RID. R-I-D. Repetition, intensity, diversion. So repetition would be like stating an affirmation. You know, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. You can say it, you know, all day, every day, or I have plenty of money. Can you write down? Or, or, help or you can write it down or whatever. You can just state these affirmations over and over again. And eventually you're bo you'll bore a hole through the firewall and you'll get it in there even if it takes 20, 30 years. Eventually, you will get an affirmation past the firewall, but 99% of it's just going to bounce off. So you're saying that's a slow process? That's the slowest way. Okay? Intensity. Intense emotion has so much juice behind it that it blasts through the firewall. Okay? That makes sense. The problem is 99% of our intense emotions are negative emotions. What if you learn how to harness that through meditation? Well, that would be fantastic. But your average person, 99% of their intense emotions are negative. So what's building up in most people's brain is more negative than positive. Right. That makes sense. I mean, almost like 10 to 1, there's more negatives than positives getting flooding into our brains on a daily basis. And over a number of years, that can really build up to be a problem. That's funny because I was listening to someone that said out of the millions of possibilities, when something happens, you concentrate on the worst one. Yeah. Well, you should be concentrating on the best one. You should be. Like at least the good ones. 
but the brain has yeah. so much negativity in it. Yeah, yeah. And so did your ancestors, so did your parents and your grandparents. But you've inherited a real mess. <laughs> A real mess. Okay. Most people. Now, when I, when I met you, Kara, I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy's clearer than most people have ever well, worked Well, I meditate an hour or two a day, so. I know, but who does that? Really no one. No one. But here's the thing. I, I read about really no one. and also people that reach enlightenment, and they meditate a lot. So I'm like, why don't I do it? Right. And it's helped my life in every way possible. Right. Every single way. You see, and that's the one of my favorite stories is how Steve Jobs saved Apple. By meditating. In the room? Yeah, he locked himself in a room for three days. He says, I'm not leaving this room until I know the answer on how to save this company. <laughs> nice. You know, he came out with pictures of an iPhone. I mean, yeah. Uh, inside and out. What went into it, all the features it was going to have, everything. So nice. this will save Apple. You know, so meditation, you know, you talk about you know, successful people, billionaires, different people who meditate. And yeah, meditation is a way to get more positive in the brain than negative. Way, okay. way, way more. Now, the third way to get in was D, which is distraction. Okay? So let's pretend that that firewall is actually people. They're like armed guards. No getting in. Okay. Okay? If we can, you know, ring all the fire bells in the whole town, they're going to scatter. and They're going to get out of the way. Okay? So there's a couple of ways we're going to get past the firewall. We're actually going to use repetition and intensity and diverse. We're going to use all three. Okay? The first one I like is called the not-not. Yeah. The not-not. Yeah. You know, say, I'm happy. I'm not happy. I am not not happy. I'm I am not not not, 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 not happy. Not, not, not. I am not 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 happy. And pretty soon, at one point, your brain gets confused and says, well, are we or aren't we? And then you check it. And then it goes like this. And just, it opens up. Are we or aren't we? Tell me. And then you state your affirmation at that point. Uh -huh. You've totally distracted the firewall. You've mm -hmm. opened up the brain to receive. And then you tell it what you want it to believe. I'm happy. Do it five times. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. And then he goes, oh, we're happy. Or, oh, it's okay to have enough money. Yeah. Oh, it's okay to have someone to love me. I am good enough. I am strong enough. I can do whatever I want to do. And we start telling ourselves what we want to have happen simply by distracting the brain with something as simple as not, 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 not. That's interesting. I mean, it worked for me. Yeah. And with then, the tired portion, though. I'm tired, I'm yeah. not tired, I'm not, not, it I'm not tired. It works really good because... And, but I check myself, and I'm like, wait, am I really tired? No, I'm not that tired. No, and that's just a protective program. It's kind of, kind of like tells us we're tired way before we're actually tired. That makes sense. And so if we just say, I'm not, 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 not tired, I'm not, 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 not tired, and then when it opens up, you go, I'm not tired. And you go, oh, I'm not tired. And you actually hear a little voice in your head say, I'm not tired, and then you, and then you know you forget all about it. You can do this with a headache. Can you do it with fear? Yes. Can you do it with pain? Yes. Like I just said, you can do it with a headache. Yeah, a headache. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. pain is actually a function of the brain. Mm -hmm. You may get hit on the leg, yeah, but it sends a message to the brain, and then the brain interprets it just like your vision. You, I'm not actually seeing you. Okay, I'm seeing a digital imprint of what my eyes picked up. That makes sense. You know, um, my eyes actually see upside down, and then my brain turns it right side up. That reminds me of the movie Wild Wild West. Mm -hmm. When he chops off the head, he has to turn it around upside down. Yeah. Yeah, so he can actually see the last image yeah. of the guy who killed him. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. All right, good, good. Yeah, the one with Will Smith. Actually. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, the brain, pain is a function of the brain. And one of the ways you know that is people might have an arm cut off and their fingers are itching. Fingers that don't exist. You mean the phantom limbs? The phantom limbs. Yes. Yeah, they can still feel their fingers itching. Like, how do I scratch a finger that's not there? Well, it's it's just, it's in the brain. Right. Don't they put a mirror or something like that to <laughs> stop the pain? I've, I've um, read about that before. I've never used mirror, but we've used eye patches. That makes sense. Because that, that you have a left brain sense. and a right brain, mm -hmm. and if you put a patch on one eye for like 10 minutes, uh, if you close your eye, it doesn't work. But if you open it, but it's not getting any input, okay. half of your brain relaxes and you, you, you put the eye patch on whichever eye feels most comfortable 
and then it'll calm people down or in stress. It's kind of an yeah. interesting thing that uh, I've learned along so the way. So Chris helped me walk on glass to oh, overcome yeah, my fear of glass. We haven't done fire yet, but no. Chris teaches people how to walk on fire like legitly by helping them overcome yeah, their I'm fears. Yeah, I'm a certified firewalk instructor. That's awesome. Tell us more about that. Okay, so. And by the way, he hires people for events, so that would be great for a corporation if you guys want to build up confidence or just team activities. Yeah. Um, each cell in the body puts out about 1.2 volts of electricity. The mitochondria in the cell produces electricity. And that actually puts this energy field around the cell. Uh, similar to the Earth has this huge magnetosphere, which makes your compass point north and makes the solar flares bounce off. The Earth has a, has a force field okay. that keeps it safe. And so do each one of our cells. So then our 50 trillion cells working in cooperation with each other will create a whole energy field around our whole body. And there's trillions of volts of electricity in this energy field. Okay. Um, what we do is we learn how to focus it and project it around our body in a way that will stand between us and that hot fire. The fire's a thousand degrees or more. Some of them are fifteen hundred degrees. And they're like three feet high, right? <laughs> well, we just use the hot coals. Okay. We just we burn them down to hot coals. Okay. And if the coal's glowing red, it's over a thousand degrees. Interesting. Once they go black, they could still be as high as five hundred degrees. I mean to a point where you can't walk on them unless oh, yeah. you train yourself. And well, the, it only takes about four hours to learn how to do it. That's awesome. I can take anybody. Um, not, I mean, if I took 50 people, not everybody's going to walk the fire. Well, what some it? people will just, <clears throat> will just won't feel comfortable doing it. What if everyone believed they could walk on fire? Well, I did one recently with like 30 people and uh, 29 of them walked, and the one who didn't was in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, yeah. yeah. But um, there's also the thing of... Uh, if you see another person doing it, like the exercise that we did, oh, yeah. then, then more people will be you know, able to do it. They have the confidence, like, oh, if you can do it, I can do it. You know, that is the thing that our brain thinks something's impossible until we see someone else do it, and then all of a sudden, oh, that's, that is possible. It's the, it's the four-minute mile yep. syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's impossible. Everyone thought it was impossible, so it was. One person did it, and then all of a sudden, in the next the year, function. 10 people did it. Yep. Because, you know, it's no longer impossible. It's no longer impossible. Okay, so we project this energy field into a force field between us and the hot fire. Uh, we, walk up, we work up to that um, by, he mentioned, uh, broken glass. Okay. Uh, we walk barefoot across broken glass. Now, that scared me the first time. Because I used to get cut by glass every time I got near any broken glass, I'd get cut. And I'm like, like ugh. And you know, the guy says, look, it's flat glass. And if you walk carefully, you're not going to get caught. Just pay attention to the bottom of your feet because what we do to walk on the fire is we amp up the energy field. Like, you know, get excited because that amps it up. But most people, when they get excited, they, they bring it up around their head and they leave their feet exposed. And so we need to keep it down around our feet. So we need to focus on staying grounded. And you can teach anyone how to do this. Right. So it's just two things that people don't normally do at the same time. Depressed people stay grounded because they're not looking up at all. They're looking down, you know, and they're focused down. Mm -hmm. And excited people are looking up. And if we can learn how to stay focused and excited at the same time, we can walk on fire. Because then the energy field's amped up, but it's clear down to your feet. And it's as simple as that. I want to try it. Yeah, I really do. I mean, we did the arrow, which was awesome. I was a little... Uh, uh, Timid at first, yeah. I was like, "Yeah, I'm not going to push this arrow." Yeah, it does something to the brain when you defy death. Yes, and taking an arrow and sticking the point right on your throat. Yeah, putting the other against the wall and pushing Boom. against it till it breaks sounds absolutely in insane. Right. I mean, but it helped me walk over the glass. Right. I wouldn't do the glass unless I did the arrow. Right. But that's just building confidence. But but the truth is, it's a cheap target arrow. It only takes 20 pounds of pressure to break, and so it's not even unsafe. So. It's 20 pounds. It would take 100 pounds to injure your throat. It only takes 20 pounds to break the pressure. So even kids can do it. It's, totally, it's a totally safe practice that in your brain flips a big switch. Then all of a sudden, um, like I had a girl at the last fire walk. She goes, after I did the arrow, I wasn't even afraid of the fire. Because fear was just gone. Nice. It, it flips, That's how I felt. 
that big switch in your brain that's called that's fear, it just shuts it off. That's how I felt, 100%. Yeah. Remember you like hold my hand, we'll walk over to class. I was like, I don't need to, I got this. Yeah. yeah. But I wouldn't do it um, if it wasn't for Daryl. Tell you the truth. Right. I wouldn't walk over to class. Yeah. Interesting. So it really, like like you said, it just unlocks Yeah, something. yeah. And so we do we do events like that at the fire walk. We, we do these build-up events so that people are not afraid when they finally get to the fire so that they can actually get amped up, excited. And then sometimes we'll have the whole group synergy going. It's like if one person says, I'm not sure if I'm there, she'll ask me, everybody, everybody, just you know, chant with me, yell with me, get excited just with positive me. Energy. Everybody just starts screaming and yelling, ah, positive energy, and then those people will walk across. Nice. You know, and so we help each other. Nice. Um, because when, if you're at a certain level, but you get in a group that's at this level, pretty yeah. soon you're, you're just naturally but get, a, get a lift. But it works the opposite too, right? If you're in a good place and you're surrounded by bad people yeah. or like depressed people, you also go down. Yeah, so that's why it's not a good idea to hang around depressed people for very long. Yeah, <laughs> or at all for that matter. <laughs> yeah. What do you, do you have any advice for people that are like depressed or sad? How to like kind of like come out of that? The not thoughts will help. The not thoughts will help. Um, another one is just to say, I'm grateful I am sad. That's what, that's how I tell myself. You know, Not because that I'm sad, but whatever is going on, gratitude is a much higher vibration than even love. Really? Yes. I thought love was number one. No. Gratitude. Gratitude. Uh, on a scale from one to a thousand, according to David Hawkins, uh -huh. love is about a 530 and gratitude is about a seven something. Power versus force, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Like, highly recommended. Read it. Yes. Um, okay. He, he's no longer with us. But I do personally know his editor. Really? Yes. Uh, what am I talking to his editor? Uh, you may. Her name is, uh, well, I won't tell you right now. I'll tell yeah, you. Yeah, I'll yeah, yeah. No problem. No problem. And then if she says yes, you can uh, you can call yeah. her and put her on the program. I'll fly to her. I don't care. Uh, she's down in uh, Sedona. Perfect. I'll drive there. Yeah. I want to go to the energy places. What do you think of that Sedona energy vortex? I've been there. You have? Like, Did you feel something? Um, I went into a crystal shop and I just went, what? <laughs> really? Yeah, there's a crystal shop down there. Uh, I mean, I believe unbelievable. unbelievable. I mean, there's a crystal shop everywhere. But and then we climbed up to on one of the mountain peaks. It's supposed to be a really good vortex, and we did singing crystal bowls and so, that kind of stuff. It was a lot of fun. So, for people that don't know Sedona in Arizona, there's like this energy vortex. It's like an energy hotspot where a lot of people go to do yoga or meditation, right? And they just feel recharged, and their yeah. pain goes away, and there's something there. There is. I met someone in Cancun who is a geologist, and his friend is doing research there. I'm like, so what's up? Is there something? There's like 100%. Yeah. He's like, there's something out of the ordinary. Yeah, there's places like that on Earth. Yeah. No. Where there's just a higher frequency of, yeah. the, of the energy force field around the Earth. There's places where it just is kind of just got hot spots. What do you think that is? Just um, like the, just the energy? There's, the it's got to just be, you know... The way energy moves in waves and okay. uh, circles and stuff, it's just, it's probably just a natural, just like eddies in a, in a pool of water, you know? I mean, there's just okay. places where there's just a bunch of extra energy. Like Tibet is one of those, and that's why all these monks have been coming out of Tibet for hundreds of years. That. I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. It's just a natural place where all these really inspired people seem to come by, and it's because they grew up in a higher energy. Okay. How, how do you recommend people become more inspired to just better themselves? Well, like I said, you can start with gratitude. Gratitude. Um, because whatever is going on, like I had a client, you know, she had two children who were addicts. Okay. And I just said to this, I said, you know, whatever you're grateful for seems to resolve quicker and easier. Okay. So would you like us to clear your brain on I'm grateful my children are addicts? And <laughs> she walked away and she told one of her friends, what did he say? He says, they told me it's a good thing my kids are addicts. And I said, well, not exactly what I said. Mm -hmm. What I said is whatever you choose to be grateful for will resolve quicker and easier. So if you chose to be grateful that they're addicts, you'll probably resolve the situation a lot faster. Or maybe just be grateful that you're aware your children are addicts. Right. And now okay. how you can you know, resolve yeah. the issue. So just choosing to be grateful. You know, so if you're angry, grateful. I'm grateful I'm angry. And all of a sudden you're not as angry because yeah, you're more grateful. <laughs>
I'm grateful yeah. I'm sad, I'm grateful I'm sick, I'm grateful I'm depressed, I'm grateful I'm frustrated, I'm grateful I'm broke, I'm grateful that I've been abandoned, I'm grateful I've been cheated on. And you know, it sounds ridiculous, but it just makes you feel better. It makes you feel better. And then if you feel better, you start attracting things to be grateful for instead of things to be ungrateful for. Okay. Because you remember those 50 trillion volts of energy I talked about? Mm -hmm. they, some of them go out. And they're magnetic in nature, so they'll find things that match and then bring them to you. Interesting. So you naturally attract through magnetic energy, and when you have 50 trillion volts of electricity, and nice. that's a lot. It sounds like magic, but there's definitely science behind it. There's, you know, there's quanta, if you quantum, quantum physics, quantum consciousness to be exact. It's all explainable through quantum physics. Yep. It's yep. all science. Yeah. Although, you know, it's not completely universally accepted everywhere, but you know, science doesn't care if it's accepted or not. <laughs> this is the ultimate truth. So whatever you think about most of the time tends to happen in your life. Yeah. And so if you choose to be grateful for bad things, your brain goes, oh, and you remember those presets, you know, those preferences, it'll say, well, let's just attract things to be grateful for then. What other things are we grateful for? And then pretty soon, oh, there's more money, there's more love, there's more happiness, there's more health, there's more fun, there's more free time. You know, all of a sudden you're, you're attracting your preferences instead of just, you know, doing things that keep you safe. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay, what about visualization? Does that also help? Like visualizing something happened okay. or pretend it already happened before you walk through the motion. I was listening to it. It's kind of like... Uh, you're reaching into the future and you're pulling it into your present. Right. Now this is, I, I can tell you a couple of quick stories. Um, her girl put a picture of a house on her vision board of what she wanted. I've never done that, but I should. And when she got a house, she pulls out her vision board and the, it looked just like the one on the vision board, except for the garage was on the left side instead of the right side. It even had the square windows and everything. Because man, this house is almost identical to the one I put on my board. That wasn't my intention. I just was saying, I want a house. I want a house. Mm -hmm. um, another one, a famous person named John Asraf put a house on a vision board. And like five years later, he's moving into a house. And he opens up his, his boxes. And he pulls out his old vision board. And he's living in the house uh, that was on his vision board, the exact house. And he was like in Minnesota at the time. This house is in L.A. And he goes... How did I end up in the exact house off my vision He attracted board? it from his future self. Right. That makes sense. Jim Carrey? Yeah. With the $10 million check he wrote himself when right. he was broken homeless. Yep. He's like, I'm going to cash this one day. Yep. And he did it. That's he legendary. He, he always talks about visualization. Right. So um, you, you need to be careful because um, a lady I knew wanted to get married, but she put a picture of this happily married couple on her vision board, but the guy was wearing a, a cowboy hat. Mm -hmm. She goes, I've had so many cowboys want to marry me that I finally figured out that I shouldn't have put a picture of a cowboy on my vision board. You attract it? <laughs> she comes attracted to cowboys. Okay. Um, and another one wanted to get married, and so she put pictures of wedding rings. Um, she had pictures of three different rings. <laughs> and she attracted some guy who'd been married three times. She goes, oh, this is getting freaky weird. You, you need to be more specific to what you want because it may interpret what you give it in a way you weren't expecting. You know, it's a computer, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to go based on what, how it interpreted the information you gave it. Okay. So that's kind of interesting. So it'll be a little more tedious. Yeah. I got it. Okay, what advice do you have for people that uh, just want more purpose in life? Because you kind of gave me purpose. Like, I always want to travel, and I want to help people. So, boom, I started a podcast. And it's going to give me an opportunity to travel. I'm traveling in two weeks. I'm going back to Cancun. Well, you know, like I said, our subconscious brain knows a lot. Okay. You know, the, the reason we don't act as much is because um, I think it's a lot of subliminal messaging is clogged up. Subliminal? Yeah. Like advertisements? Advertisements, like different organizations who, you know, hypnosis is a thing. Hypnosis. And so inadvertently... Um, even though they've tried to make it illegal in advertising, they've been doing it for ever since they developed television. Don't they have subliminal messages? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't you know, like, like you go to the theater and the little message flashes, go get popcorn, go get popcorn. Yeah. But it only flashed so fast that only your subconscious saw it. And then you go, oh, I want some popcorn. You know, and so they're, they're, they're trying to make it illegal, but people keep finding ways to sneak it in. But there's also uh, ways that people 
get it in through childhood, right? When you're a child, your parents tell you that, you know, oh, you're we can't uh, afford that. We, we don't have enough money. You're you're never gonna mount to anything. Yeah, you're stupid. You, yeah, you always you're make stupid. mistakes. You're dumb. Why can't you just grow up? Why can't you be like your brother? But, but you that's know, sin, right? Yeah, all that uh, repetition, repetition, mm -hmm. intensity, the diversion. Well, the repetition was there from the time you were born. If your parents weren't savvy on how to program a kid, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, chances are they made some screw ups. They made some screws. Okay. And, or they just didn't help you in the way. Right. And then, like I said, then the patterns came from your ancestors as well. So, you know, it's kind of like unless you actively take control, mm -hmm. the cards are stacked against you. So, the cards are stacked against you. But if you actively take control and you start doing your meditations, you start doing your active affirmations, you start using your vision boards, you start. Um, here's another little one. You just. Flex all your muscles and hold your breath. That, that fires every neuron in your brain and distracts your brain. Yeah, you can't be mad when you do that. So I call it blue face because I heard a kid once say, I'm going to hold my breath on blue in the face till I get what I want. And you know what? That kid knew what he's talking about. Because if you hold your breath till you're blue in the face, mm -hmm. you will program your brain to give you what you want. Because you'll distract it and whatever you're thinking will get past the firewall. So there's one, just flex all your muscles, and the mm -hmm. other one is to not not. Not not. And if you do that, you're going to pay attention to what you're feeling. What am I feeling? Oh, I'm feeling anger. Okay. I'm not, 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 not angry. I'm not, not. Okay, and you just take a minute, clear out your anger, and then go about your day. Um, set positive affirmation. So let's say you wake up. And for the next two hours, you're going to hang around the house, and you're going to exercise, and you're going to mm -hmm. eat breakfast, whatever. You know, state some intentions for that segment of your life. Okay, in the next two hours, I intend to be happy, to have energy, to be motivated, to get ready, to be safe, whatever. Then you're going to drive to work. Well, I intend to have... A safe drive. A safe drive. The car's going to run good. The traffic lights are going to be green. The other people are going to be polite. They're going to let me in. And it's it's going to be an uneventful drive. It's going to be fun and safe. And I'm going to be inspired with good thoughts. And so for that segment of your life, you state intention. And then you can be at work for eight hours. Well, I'm going to be motivated. I'm going to be focused. I'm going to get more work done than I would it would in two whole days. And you stay this intention for that segment of your life. And then you, you commute home. Then you, it's time for sleep. Well, I'm going to intend to sleep well. I'm going to intend to rebuild my body, to wake up refreshed. And if you just take 30 seconds of your at life. the beginning of each segment of your life and state what you want to have happen in it, your brain will start to build a pattern. And pretty soon, that's going to be your default setting. Okay. And then you're going to just find yourself more successful, happier, healthier, more abundant, just because you said so. I am definitely going to try to – I haven't thought about it like that. Yeah. I usually do it only in the morning, right, when I right. wake up. I'm gonna, I plan out my day. This is going to happen. But if you do it and – if you break it down, I guess it's more potent and more right. effective. Because you'd be surprised if you pay attention to how things are different when you start intending – for them to be different because we really are have a lot more control over life than we realize we yeah do. for sure even if you think you don't you really do you're still alive you're thinking so right and you're sending off signals constantly and you're attracting things that are going on around you good what do you think of people that are like really wealthy or just you know they're really well off they're successful to have the things in life that everyone looks up to but they're actually just empty and depressed inside okay um and how would you help that people afterwards? What are your thoughts on it, and how would you help people? Well, obviously, there are wealthy people who are happy and well-adjusted and doing really well. Mm -hmm. And there are wealthy people who are depressed and sad because they thought money would make them happy. And when they got their money, they realized that it didn't solve their problems because that wasn't the problem in the first place. Yeah. Okay? And a lot of um, famous you know, rock stars or whatever – they make a bunch of money and then they kind of go crazy. They do a lot of drugs and they go out and they do abusive behaviors of all kinds. And a lot of them die. Johnny Depp. And a lot of them don't die. And then they figure it out that, oh, you know, maybe I have all this money because I'm supposed to make the world a better place. And then they find purpose. Perfect. You know, I just saw a picture of Elton John, you know, Sir Elton John. 
you know, fighting for people with AIDS. Okay, he has purpose, and yeah. he's plastering his face all over the world, saying, "Help me in my fight against AIDS," because I think there's a cure, and I want to help my friends. You know, uh, he found he's, he's put himself out there in a very vulnerable place, saying, "People are suffering, and I want to do something about it." You right. know, and he's in a position to do so. Yeah. So uh, fantastic, and Sir Elton John, way to go. Probably makes him happier too doing it. Well, of course it makes you happy when you find a purpose. Um, I don't know if you know who Jerry Lewis was. Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis. No. I mean, he was a comedian from like the 1940s and 50s with Dean Martin, who was one of the Rat Pack. Okay. A whole bunch of really famous movies. Okay. Go back and check them out. Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin. Yeah, I'll check them funny, out. Funny, funny movies. Funny movies. Anyway, he spent the rest of his life uh, helping kids with muscular dystrophy. And he did these telephones year after year after year. So, you know, some of these uh, famous people find purpose and then they're off to the races. Awesome. After they get past all of the poor me self pity mode right, right, and the right. self abuse mode, they, they go into, you know, service mode and mission mode. And then they, uh, they have a very long and healthy and abundant and successful okay. life. Well, that's why I meditate, so I don't get to that bad mode to get into the good mode. I just well, want to get to the good mode. Gradually get in there. I just think meditation, I don't know, for some reason, it just really helped me. I still don't know what I'm doing. I'm concentrating on my breath every morning. I do awareness, um, and, and it's just helped me immensely. Well, there's no really way to do it wrong, but there are some ways to work better than others. Yeah, what's a, what's a way well, that works well, better Well, we have a others? statement that says you can't do it wrong. Mm -hmm. But you can't do it long. You can't do it wrong, but you can't do it long. But you can do it long. But you can do it long. Yeah, you can't do it wrong, but yeah. you can do it long, which means if you do it wrong, it's just going to take longer. It's still going to work. Yeah. It's yeah. just going to take longer. You're not going to get as much results. What would be a faster way to meditate? Because I'm really big on All that. right. So here's my, here's here's my favorite meditation. Okay. It's the ignore the itch meditation. Oh, uh, where you just stand still? Yeah. Because until your body starts itching? When you sit perfectly still, your body's going to think, are we going to sleep? Mm -hmm. And after about a minute, it goes, you know, there hasn't been any movement for a minute. I think he's asleep. And I, I thought there was better communication within the two brains. It turns out there's not. There's not. So the one brain is going to say, hey, I think that guy over there, I think he's asleep. Well, let's test it and see. Let's tell him to scratch his nose. Uh -huh. Okay, you're going to sit there, and about a minute later, your nose is going to itch like crazy. And if you scratch it, they're going to say, oh, um, he's awake. And everything's going to go back to normal. Okay. If you ignore the itch for like 30 seconds, they stop sending the signal. You go, oh, no, he's really asleep. Okay, everybody, power down. It's going to sleep mode. And your whole body will just go, whoa. Total relaxation, so much so that your arms and legs will develop sleep paralysis and it'll feel like they weigh 50 pounds. And you're going to be sitting there going, ha ha, fooled you. I'm still awake. Okay. And you go into a trance state in some sense. And then you go into a trance state. And people actually use this as the jump off state. Those who astral travel, they use this as the jump off. They put their body to sleep first, get their whole subconscious brain out of the way mm -hmm. so that they can project their thoughts to wherever they want to go. And for people that don't know what astral travel is, it's uh, out of body, just traveling out of body. Yeah. Yeah. Rob. Or remote viewing is where you just kind of like How do you stand that, your eyeballs 50 miles and, and watch something else. That is something I want to learn more about. But uh, I don't really understand that. I don't really. I don't Clairvoyance really, is what they call it. I understand, it. but I can't do it. So. I can't do it either. I mean, I try to do it a couple of times. And I ask people, I was like, is this what happened? They're like, no. But just, like, just imagine you could see it. That's awesome. So pretty much you're able to see things from miles and miles away yeah. without actually being there or knowing. So you're really knowing without knowing. Right. If you check YouTube, there's a magician who will look through other people's eyeballs. That's and so he will blindfold himself and then drive a car. See, but science says that's <laughs> impossible. Well, but I don't think anything's impossible. Just check it out because this guy will blindfold himself and then he'll put you in the car. And if you look side, he'll say, Look for it, look for it because <laughs> he can't see, yeah, except for through your eyeballs. Wow, 
Um, and he has this whole magic thing where, and he's done this with hundreds of people. So uh, and they blindfold okay. him securely, they put five blindfolds around his head, whatever, and he'll just look through that guy's eyes and he'll drive the car. <clears throat> That's crazy. Yeah. Really? I need to look into that. Yeah, just check yeah. it out. But I still don't understand how people turn remote. Computers. I know it's possible because uh, the military's done it and Russia's oh, done it. Oh, yeah, the military use, has used remote viewers uh, for, yeah. for decades now. So, yeah, that's definitely about Well, that's why I started this podcast because I want to learn more about that yeah. stuff and just bring it to life. If you want to know more about that, just watch the movie The Men Who Stare at Goats. Uh, you, I watched it. I told you I watched George it. George Clooney yep. and Jeff Bridges. And, and there's and also a Third Eye Spy, which is interesting. I, I need to check that one out. You haven't seen it? It's the guy that literally started a program for the military. Yeah. It's him. So it, it's obviously a thing because the government's yeah. been doing it for years. And they found that Russia was doing it. And then Russia was doing it on them. They're doing it on well, them. Well, of course. Because it's, yeah. it's a thing. And if it's a thing, That's everyone's going to be but, run to use it. But here's the thing. The guy that actually was doing it and trained the military, he said, anyone can do it. He's like, you're just trying to sleep to it. Right. Exactly. We're, we all have the same abilities. Right. Con, no, like a higher consciousness in a sense. Right. We all have... Um, this energy body that uh, has 50 trillion volts of electricity and can do all kinds of amazing things with cool. it. Okay. Yeah. So as we wake up to our, our abilities, you know, like the guy who can you know, climb out ever a spare foot or whatever. You know, I mean, there's all kinds Limp of... Limhoff. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't walk on ice, but I walk on fire, so... Hey, nice. <laughs> yeah. I definitely recommend, Chris, you guys should... Uh, if you're ever in Salt Lake City, hire him. Um, hire him for your event. Um, it's it's really cool. Um, he's a really good guy, and uh, he definitely helped me. So uh, if you need some help with anything, especially uh, you know if it's depression or if you just need a purpose in life, definitely come visit him. Chris, thank you. All right, thank you. Appreciate it, my man.